from 1984 to 1988, Winnie Woolley served as the seventh president of PGCAC. Her focus was on unfair housing practices, voter registration, and education. The chapter's size doubled from 115 to an estimated 230 members. Under Soror Woolley's leadership, the inaugural tour of historically black colleges and universities began and remains a fundamental program to this day. Since its inception, participation has increased to two busloads of students, and it has expanded to include a day tour for middle school students. Parthenia S. Pruden, the chapter's eighth president from 1988 to 1990, strengthened PGCAC's work through its Arts and Letters Commission. In partnership with the Montgomery County Alumni Chapter, a formal literacy program entitled Read Two was established. Research confirmed that when read to on a consistent basis, the literacy skills of children were significantly and positively impacted. Deltas from both chapters voluntarily and consistently read to children in natural settings, daycare centers, schools, and churches. Deborah Warren strengthened the chapter's health and social welfare programs as the ninth chapter president. The Adopt-A-Family program evolved into a nurturing, mentoring outreach to the residents of Central Gardens Housing Development in Seat Pleasant, Maryland. Carolyn Cashwell, chapter president from 1994 to 1998, will eternally be remembered in our chapter's history as the impetus for the evolution of the Prince George's Delta Alumni Foundation. During her term, we also applauded the return of the Jabberwock Cotillion, a longstanding tradition still active today. Rose Whitehurst Miller served as our 12th chapter president from 1998 to 2000. With a membership of 290, she created the longstanding inspirational team of spiritual leaders. The inspiration team ministers to the needs of the chapter members and their families. Under her leadership, the Dr. Betty Shabazz Mentoring Program was established, and the chapter sponsored the first representative to the Presidential Academy at the 44th National Convention in 1998. The chapter received the first of many grants to advance the Reading as Fundamental Tutoring programs at Glass Manor Elementary School. President Miller organized the first Adopt a Road plan and implemented the fundraising committee for the chapter, which still amasses funds through events and activities to support chapter programs. The 10th president of PGCAC, Deborah Wilder, continues to be celebrated for her influential social action advocacy. Under your leadership from 1992 to 1994, our chapter won the Eastern Region's Social Action Award in 1993. We were recognized for the successful outcomes of the grant-funded Get Out the Vote campaign. In 1994, the chapter won the first ever Social Action Award at the 42nd National Convention in St. Louis. Social action falls under the political awareness and involvement thrust of the sorority. So really, what impact has PGCAC made politically in Prince George's County over the past four and a half decades? I would say over the past four and a half decades, uh, Prince George's County Alumni Chapter has really stood out in Prince George's. We began by inviting political and community leaders into the chapter. Uh, we've had our county executive. We've had the chief of police. We had the first ever African American to represent Prince George's County at our chapter so that they could know who we were. And by contrast, we have supported our Delta <coughs> sisters in elected and appointed um, positions. I think the community has seen us out there. We continue to do voter registration, voter education. We've collaborated with other organizations and have had political forums. I think. Prince George's County Alumni Chapter is now the go-to. Candidates, elected officials, uh, appointed officials now know that we are a group of powerful women. And they come to us 
in the political arena. We, I think, have shown ourselves to be very savvy, um, to be not only because of our size, but because of our knowledge of issues and the, polit and the politics of the day. And so we have made our mark, I think. And I think a market has been, that's absolutely correct. And we're also joined by our 13th chapter president, Ola Hill. And Sora Hill presided over PGCAC from 2000 to 2004, implementing enhanced operational efficiencies. She's also known for us as our technology president. She instituted electronic communications for the chapter, which started with the listserv communication tool. So Sora Hill, your administration really marked the beginning of our involvement too with the local state legislative advocacy. You testified at the first state bond hearing for the proposed Community Development Center. Share your experience and what the eventual accomplishment was. It was quite an interesting experience with dealing with the Maryland State Delegation. We had an opportunity to testify in front of the delegation in support of our goal to build a, a center here in Prince George's County, a cultural center in the community. And so a busload of us actually went to um, Annapolis and testified in front of the Ways and Means Committee. And, and as a result of that testimony, as a result of all the research that we've done, we actually came away with funding from the state and matching funds from the county that allowed us to purchase our Delta Cultural Center, which resides in Lana, Maryland. And you know, when you think about describing the, the, the bond hearing, and we've done a number of those things under your leadership and, and the eventual leadership of other chapter presidents, I, we know you also received a grant from the National Institutes of Health. Yes, uh, during the course of the year, our emphasis and focus is, was on Alzheimer's education. Uh, and as a result of that, we went to the federal government that had grant opportunities for that program, and we were very successful at re receiving a grant from National Institute of Health for Alzheimer's education, and we were able to roll out a number of programs and workshops to the community, as well as to the chapter, to better educate us on, on Alzheimer's. And we all know that through the Prince George's County uh, Alumni Chapter, we offer a number of programs and services, and that, that doesn't just happen. We have to raise dollars in order to support those. So can you talk about your efforts relative to our fundraising uh, mechanisms for the chapter? Uh, raising funds is key. We can't operate solely on our membership fee. So we've always attempted to come up with creative ways of raising funds. And one of the first that we did was um, institute uh, an annual step show. As we reached out to the community, they were very interested. So we did our step show and raised a significant amount of money through the step shows. And then we also um, implemented our annual craft feast, which actually started out as the initial intent was for an event that the chapter and the chapter family members could come to and enjoy itself. And um, the initial um, number we sold was 400 tickets. And to this day, we continue that uh, crowd feast to a sellout crowd of about 1,500 people and a waiting list for our crowd feast. And that has been significant in allowing us to have funds to do additional programs, to give additional scholarships. So that's been critical. And the community has supported us in our uh, fundraising efforts. And you know, we're also joined today by our 14th chapter president, Cynthia Myrick Kelly, and she's known for expanding services in the, in the community during your administration. You led the chapter's Hurricane Katrina disaster relief efforts and uh, two other national initiatives, the Delta Gems Mentoring Program and Financial Fortitude. Why were these programs essential given the work of Delta Sigma Theta? So uh, our programs, I, we had a theme, Sisters in Service, and so these were two national initiatives. These are Delta brands, and we wanted to implement them in our community so that wherever you went across the world, you would have a Delta Gems program and also financial fortitude in any city. So these were national initiatives. We accepted the charge, and um, 
we implemented the program to our community in Prince George's County, and they have been very successful, and they still in it are in existence today. And I think that there's another one that is particularly critical given where we are at our time in history here in the county, and that was that during your administration, uh, the chapter partnered with the Maryland uh, National Capital Park and Planning Commission on the Ridgely Rosenwald School Initiative. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, Sora Kelly. Okay. So we had the opportunity to work with Ms. Mildred Gray, which was uh, in uh, identifying our school as a Rosenwald school and then partnering to renovate the facility and be a part of the grand opening. And now it's a historic museum for our county that uh, schools and all over the state, they come and visit our originally Rosenwald school. And I know that many of our chapter members support that by uh, yes. volunteering on yes. a regular basis. Yes, we do. It's also noteworthy uh, that the chapter has won a number of honors and awards, including Alumni Chapter of the Year, mm -hmm. and membership grew from 430 members to 647 members. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your leadership as well, okay. Sora Kelly. Thank you.